What's the moral of this story? Maybe it's that every time you bury one secret, you create another. Maybe it's that the things you think tie you down, your anchors, might be the same things that lift you up, keep you going, maybe even help you find a little grace. Or maybe it's just that having kids is really fucking hard. I want to resist putting too neat a bow on it. Whatever you take away from the baby monitor of podcast of family horrors, I want to thank you for spending a portion of your life with it. And I hope you enjoy this one final episode. Act 3, Episode 17. Lissa and Asher spend the night in the sleep center at the children's hospital. It isn't so bad. They have warm milk and soft couches. When Lissa wakes, sometime around four, she wanders out into the hallway, leans over the railing, and peers down into the atrium. Down there on the floor, the architects have etched a maze and Lissa spends a long time working her way to its center. At seven, Dr. Horwood shows up, coffee in hand, hair in a loose bun. She smiles, she asks Lissa what changed her mind. Lissa looks at her with wide eyes for a second and then says, they had a rough night, that's all. The doctor explains things. Asher will sleep for three nights in an observation room. She shows Lissa the room and together they lay Asher down in a crib there. It looks just like any other nursery, Lissa thinks, but it is not theirs. Still, Asher is sleeping. Lissa watches him for a while, watches him dream like maybe he hasn't dreamed in months. The doctor says she can stay at the hospital for the next three days or she may come and go as she pleases. Asher will be safe there. She plans to stay, she tells the doctor. She just has to run one errand and then she will stay until her son is well again. Lissa drives the Camry home. When she arrives, Richard is sitting on the front step. He has his elbows on his knees and he is in shirt sleeves, despite November. A million miles away, the sun is up and it moves in and out of the clouds and sometimes the soft light makes their house seem muted and pale, an impression of a home nothing more. But there are moments the light comes so yellow and harsh that every crack is revealed and the white paint glows and is hard to look at for long. Richard watches his wife walk from the driveway to the porch, her body moving beneath the sweatpants and the flannel she fled in, her sneakers shuffling in small, scared steps. She eyes him cautiously, stops well before the stairs, and says, Hey. He says, you took him to the hospital? Yeah, he's sleeping there. The room they have for him, she gestures up at their second floor. It looks just like this one. Richard says, when you come home, it'll be better. I hope so. Uh, I promise. She looks at her husband for a long time. A five o'clock shadow has passed over his face, and in it there are earned patches of gray she's never seen before. They make her nervous, but she likes them anyway, finds herself liking them so much. She puts one hand on her hip and cocks it, and as she does, the raven moves its nails and the vines pull delicious thorns across her skin. She pulls at her lips with her teeth and then calls his bluff. How do you know? He takes his elbows from his thighs and stands tall on the front steps, the entrance to his home. Married people have secrets, Lissa. I need you to let me hold on to this one. And she smiles. And then, the Platts sleep. For six months, they sleep. And in the morning when they wake, they do silly things. They make pancakes and eggs and oatmeal, and Richard and Lissa try to con their thriving son into eating bananas and berries. They no longer force him to sleep in his own crib, for they know that soon a night will come when he will lie with them for the last time, and that night will come much sooner than they'd like. Sometimes they have sex, 
and now there's a pressure against the inner walls of Lissa's tummy. She's pregnant. Soon, she will tell her husband. And now she's eating oatmeal. And Richard is putting on his shoes and searching for his bag. Their day will take them down different paths. Lissa has a client coming over at noon. Richard has a conference call to reveal a new application upgrade. Asher stays home most days, sometimes with Lissa and sometimes with a nanny who makes sure his wandering hands and wobbly walk don't get him into any trouble that he can't get out of. And this morning, they have the TV on, and the announcer is saying, A gruesome discovery in Hopewood Canyon yesterday, climbers stumbled upon the body of Timothy Palmer. Palmer was reported missing last year after a hit-and-run accident led to the death of his five-year-old son, Eric. Authorities believe Palmer, a single father, may have fell or jumped to his death as many as six months ago. The screen is showing rescue crews in red helmets and orange jackets, and they are carefully raising a stretcher, and on the stretcher there is a body. At the top right corner of the TV screen, there is an inset, and the inset shows a face. And Richard is saying, Daddies love their babies. There's not much we won't do for them. And he's thinking, I had to bury something I was to become the person I need to be. And Liz is looking at the TV and can't rip her eyes away, for on it there's a face that she recognizes. And she's saying, that poor man, he lost his baby. And she means it, but she's thinking too. And she's understanding. Our secrets have drawn the shape of a home.